This is City Manager Bill Osborne welcoming you to another edition of On the Agenda. Today I visit with City Finance Director Karen Callen. We're going to be talking about several fiscal subjects including tax millage rate and our budget. And basically we hope today to make sense to you as we talk about dollars and cents. Uh, Karen, it's been a while since you've been with me mm -hmm. on the agenda. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be back. Well, you know, in June, the city adopted its annual budget, and of course that goes from July 1 through June 30th of 2011. And if you were to look at that budget that we adopted back in June, you will find that it is 7% uh, less than the adjusted uh, overall budget for the previous fiscal year. Now that's a big decrease in my opinion. And of course it's due really to declining revenues. And Karen, you as finance director mm -hmm. and for myself as city manager, we had some pretty tough situations to deal with in preparing the draft budget uh, for the mayor and the city council. But the bottom line is that there were less dollars to deal with. Uh, of course, uh, businesses and families were experiencing a decline in income uh, in many situations and were having to cut back. And, and frankly, local governments are, are no exception. And so we we're looking at, okay, how will we manage uh, with less? So uh, if you would, tell us about the instructions we gave our departments on putting together their new budgets. Yes, when we first started to develop the budget, we knew that revenues were going to decline in the neighborhood between 4 and 6%. So we gave department heads and their staff t uh, instructions to reduce their budget by 4%. And some examples of that would be looking at um, how to save in items such as vehicle fuel, ways to conserve gas, ways to prevent overtime, uh, be more creative with uh, the employee schedules so we would have less overtime. Uh, there were some capital items that we needed, but we just could not uh, purchase and program it into the budget. But those are some of the examples. Right. And of course, really, we didn't have any choice because we knew the revenues were going down, uh, including with Douglasville being a retail trade center, sales tax is one of our big uh, items and we knew that it would be down significantly. And of course we'd seen a downturn in revenues from hotel motel tax, occupational tax, uh, and building permits and so forth. So uh, tell us a little bit about the sales tax as to what's happened on, on the decline in it over the past couple of years. Sales tax is about 24% of this year's uh, total budget, and we've seen a, um, a sharp decline over the past three years. Uh, back in 2007, you can see that we had a 15% increase from 2006. Right. Then in 2008, uh, sales tax re uh, declined by 12%. Right. Then uh, in 2009, sales tax declined 8%. Right. Uh, this year, most recent uh, ended fiscal year is 2010, it only declined 1%, and we have projected a another 4% decrease for fiscal year 2011. If you add all that up, that's a 25% decrease in your sales tax revenues, which is, is huge in my opinion. But you know, we had to make the change in our budget knowing what was happening with sales tax. Of course, the uh, slump in sales tax is, is reflected on a nationwide basis, I guess on an international basis because of the economic downturn. Uh, and later in the program, uh, we're going to talk about some other revenue sources and, and what's happened with them. But I want to take a few minutes and talk about uh, one of our revenue sources that I know is very important to uh, uh, many people in the community that they pay close attention to, and that's on property taxes. And of course, I know that was a tough revenue projection to make uh, uh, back in the spring when we were working on this, so we could present a first draft to Mayor Thompson, Finance Committee Chairman Mims, and the rest of the council members. Now, we knew that, that we would have some decrease in, in property taxes, or at least we knew it wouldn't increase because no new construction to speak of was going on. And we also knew that uh, uh, gone with the wind was the time in which reassessments were finding property increasing in value even if you didn't have any new construction. And then of course we had uh, uh, on the state level uh, Senate Bill 55 which was saying tax assessors had to take into account foreclosures and the negative impact that had in the community on the value of property. Uh, so you had to take all of that into account mm -hmm. as you were working on uh, uh, this budget deciding what level of decrease we would actually have in property taxes for the city. 
Uh, tell us how you went about this and uh, how close did your forecast come <laughs> to actually the digest finally certified by the Douglas County Tax Commissioner? Uh, when we started uh, developing the budget late March, um, uh, we were really into the budget by the beginning, uh, middle of April, and the Board of Assessors had already begun to start doing some work on assessing the values of the homes in Douglas County and the city of Douglasville. So I um, got in touch with Todd Cowan and Benny Waldrop over with the Board of Tax Assessors, and uh, Todd Cowan's the tax commissioner and ask them what their preliminary projections were. Mm -hmm. And although they said there's, you know, they're still working with the numbers, they weren't sure, but they looked at residential values decreasing anywhere from 15 to 20 percent. Right. So based on what our tax digest is made up of, which is 41 percent residential and 47 percent commercial, which makes up the majority of our tax digest, I factored that in and then came up with our property tax projections. Right. So. And of course, the, we're delighted to have that commercial base because it didn't decline like right. the residential did. But uh, you came within $61,000 of hitting the nail right on the head, which I think is uh, terrific. And because you were so close on that projection, you know, at some point in, in the year, we'll have to make a, a budget adjustment. Uh, but that will be only $61,000 in terms of, of property taxes. Now, we do, uh, of course, uh, uh, two or three times during the year, uh, make adjustments in our budget. Uh, uh, tell us why we uh, need to do that. Uh, we would make adjustments when revenues would exceed our projections. Or, um, for example, uh, the prior fiscal year, um, I was um, what, very conservative with our sales tax projections, so we ended up, at, by the end of the fiscal year, having a gain of about $300,000. Right. So. That would be an instance when I would increase the budget and make a budget adjustment when revenues exceed projections. Mm -hmm. Also, when um, things come up that are very unpredictable, like the September flood, mm -hmm. um, that would be another instance when we would have to increase expenses. Because and we had expenses we hadn't counted on as right. a result of all the flood damage and everything. Right, right. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that this current budget that we'll have to do some uh, budget adjustments, uh, and I hope that's because the sales tax revenues are higher than we think they might be. Uh, it'd be great if we had to make an adjustment because occupational taxes were up, mm -hmm. the building permit uh, mm -hmm. income was up, because uh, all that would mean that the economy is turning around. Um, and to our viewers, uh, just point out that uh, Ms. Callan and myself uh, we go to the city council with any and all uh, budget amendment proposals, discuss it with them, and then they decide at what point they amend the budget and actually uh, what uh, amending uh, numbers that they use. And we're going to come back uh, a little later in this program, Karen, and talk about uh, uh, more on the budget. But I want to move to another financial subject that I know is on the minds of uh, many of our viewers, and that, of course, is what kind of change uh, there is in the property tax uh, uh, what people will be paying this fall uh, uh, as compared to last year. And let me make clear one thing as we do this, the city of Douglasville did not uh, increase property taxes in 2010. While the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, Douglas County Board of Education did uh, increase their respective millage rates, the city of Douglasville did not do so. And I kind of underscore that. Uh, from the standpoint of city managers, I had actually recommended to the mayor and council that there be a tax hike of a half a mil, uh, uh, 0.541 to be exact. That's about a fourth of what the county uh, was proposing. Uh, but, uh, you know, staff proposes, but the elected officials dispose, and that's <laughs> the way it should be. Uh, and after a lot of discussion at more than one meeting, the uh, City Council made, by, made their decision and the members followed the recommendation of the mayor. And basically here's what the mayor had said, that businesses, families are having to cut back uh, because they have to live within the income that they have available. And yes, while uh, government, including local government, can increase taxes and fees in order to bring in new revenues so that we don't have to make such deep cuts. Uh, uh, the mayor said we need to be like a business uh, and uh, like families were having to do and we needed to tighten our belts, uh, uh, do without in order to make ends meet and live within our means and uh, you know I had pointed out to the mayor and council that well with that half mil increase 
we'd realize about $600,000 that we could put in a capital account to have available for projects uh, later on. And the mayor's account argument was that, you know, the city has sufficient funding for this fiscal year uh, uh, without raising taxes. And by this time next year, if we do have needs that we need to look at uh, making some changes in the millage rate, we can do that. But uh, basically, uh, for this year, uh, with people hurting the way they are, we needed to hold the line. And, and that, of course, is what we uh, did. Uh, so our millage rate for M and O did not change. Uh, tell us what M and O stands for uh, and how long has our M and O tax rate remained unchanged despite everything that's been going on and anything else you want to tell us about M&O? Okay. M&O stands for Maintenance and Operations and it is um, Maintenance and Operations includes the cost that we would pay for our utility bills, vehicle fuel, vehicle maintenance, just general maintenance and operations to operate the city government. Right. Uh, the, um, staff salaries and all correct, of that. Correct, correct. Staff, uh, personal services and capital items. We have had our millage rate at 3.854 since 2004. Okay, six so, years. Right, six years. Uh, prior to that, it was 3.897. And from 2001 to 2002, there was a big drop. In 2001, our millage rate was 4.41 and it dropped significantly in 2002 to 3.897 and then slightly 2004 to 3.854 and we've held it at 3.854 since then. Okay, so we've, in the past decade, we've dropped our uh, millage rate almost by a full mill. Right. Okay, right. very good. Now, in addition to the property taxes that we collect for M and O, uh, we are collecting now, of course, an additional millage rate and. Uh, uh, that's to retire the bonds, the general obligation bonds that uh, uh, are being used to build the new public safety municipal court building. Uh, tell us about, uh, uh, we've got the money through the bonds mm -hmm. to plan, construct, equip uh, this new facility. Uh, what is that millage rate uh, uh, at this point? The bond millage rate that was adopted in 2010 is 1.215. And that's equivalent exactly to make the debt service payment on the bond. Okay. And in addition to, to that, uh, we also, in the police department, uh, uh, when we went out to tell the people about this bond issue proposal back in 2008, uh, all of us, including the police department, was saying that on an annual basis, assuming the funds were available, uh, that $250,000 uh, in drug funds, confiscated assets funds would be used to help uh, with these facilities because these facilities uh, uh, not only is a lot of uh, more space so that our existing programs uh, have more space, but there are enhancements that are built into this over and above what we can do now. I mean, we'll have state-of-the-art equipment that uh, we hadn't even dreamed of having in our current facilities a big firing range uh, for the police department to use. Uh, so certainly we've got a, a lot of expenses as part of this overall project that's, that's enhancements above what we have, have at this time. Uh, and you know, when we get ready to, to open this police facility early in uh, 2011, we'll let everybody know because <laughs> we want people to come see this because we're very proud of it. Now, getting back to the millage rate, uh, Karen, uh, uh, the two components of the millage rate M and O, and for the the uh, general obligation bonds requirement. Tell us what those are, and the uh, total on our millage rate. Okay, uh, the millage rate for the bonds this year is 1.215, and that would be slightly higher had we not had the $250,000 payment right. from the confiscated asset fund right. from the chief. Uh, the millage rate for the city of Douglasville's maintenance maintenance and operations is 3.854. And the total millage rate is 5.069. Okay. Now, before we leave discussion about the millage rate, uh, two points. I'll make one, and then you can make the other. Uh, and what I want to say again is the city of Douglasville did not change its millage rate, did not increase its millage rate at all in 2010. Uh, Board of Commissioners did increase uh, the county's tax millage rate almost two mills, 1.968 mills. Board of Education, actually, the property tax uh, increase was 2.75 mills. Now, we've heard uh, 
uh, discussions about, uh, well, the millage rate's gone up, but, but actually the amount you would pay in uh, property taxes is a little less. So tell us how that can be. Okay, the majority of homeowners in the city or in the county had a decrease in their assessed value of their home. Value of the houses went right. down. Right, value of the houses went down. Um, so in 2009, if you're at the value of your house went down 22% um, from $150,000, say, to $117,000. In 2009, with our current millage rate at 3.854, you would have been paying $231 annually in city taxes. In 2010, with the fact that we kept our millage rate at 3.854 and you have a lower assessed value of your home, then you would only be paying $180.37 on an annual basis for city taxes. So that's a reduction of about $50 annually. Okay. So and that explains um, the kind of seeming contrast here as to why uh, some people would be paying less uh, even though the millage has gone up it's because the value of the house has gone down. Right. Right. Okay. Let's go back now and talk about our budget uh, uh, that uh, we talked about declining revenues uh, mm -hmm. because of economic times. Uh, our two largest sources of uh, revenues uh, support the general fund, property taxes and sales taxes. Uh, but uh, uh, we've got some other revenues that mm -hmm. are very important to us because uh, those two revenue sources, I think you told me, uh, add up to still less than half of our total revenues mm -hmm. for M&O purposes. So give us a full picture on this. Uh, the general fund is our chief operating fund for the city of Douglasville, and it, we're very fortunate to have many different revenue sources. Right. Uh, sales tax and property tax, as Bill mentioned, um, are less than 50% of our total general fund revenue sources. Right. Many other cities, um, you'll see quite often that property tax constitutes over 75% of their revenue sources. Mm -hmm. So we are very fortunate in that respect. Some other revenue sources uh, that the city of Douglasville has are our occupational licenses, which represents 8% of our revenue sources. Um, insurance premium tax represents 6%. Our Georgia Power franchise uh, fees represent 5%. Greystone Power represents 4%. We have a 2% hotel motel tax portion, mm -hmm. represents 3%, and our court cost represent 3%, and we have other revenue sources which represent around 10%. Okay. So nice diversity, which uh, we've said on previous programs is a strength, I think, for this community. So uh, That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Karen, we'll come back in just a minute and talk about revenues for our sanitation operations for the conference center and for Convention Vistas Bureau because those are special funds. But uh, let's stick with the general fund picture for just a minute and uh, let's go to the other side, the expenditure side. And just give us a rundown by departments on uh, what we have in terms of how we spend the general fund dollars. As, as in uh, most local governments, police department um, is the largest portion that right. of expenses um, in the general fund. Uh, this year it represents 53% of our total general fund budget. Then we have our maintenance and grounds, 10%. General administration, 17%. Community development, 1%. Buildings, uh, building permits and zoning, 3%. Parks and, Recre and Parks and Recreation, 6%. And fortunately, our debt service is only at 1% of our total general fund budget. Right, very good. Now, um, and I think all of our departments uh, had to take reductions in their budgets, as, as we said in the beginning, of at least 4%. We had good cooperation in doing that, though I know it was difficult for them uh, to make those cuts, uh, but that's what we've done. Fortunately, we did not have to uh, uh, do any reduction in staff because we reduced uh, our staffing by 22 positions uh, the previous year. Uh, now, uh, let's now turn to the sanitation mm -hmm. fund. The sanitation fund is a, a, an enterprise fund, which means that, that uh, revenues into the sanitation fund can only be used for sanitation purposes and uh, by these what we're talking about is the delivery of uh, 
of trash and garbage service to both the residential and commercial customers. Uh, we also keep Douglasville Beautiful, its activities, uh, looking at uh, the pickup of trash and garbage off of our streets, and we use inmate labor, community service workers to try to hold that cost down. Uh, street sweepers are also part of, of this overall operation. So, uh, and of course, the revenues that we have generated uh, from the commercial and residential fees, uh, their collection provides most of the income that we're talking about. Uh, so kind of go over what that income picture looks like. The, re the revenue sources for the sanitation fund are 40% residential, mm -hmm. residential services, 25% for our commercial front end service, and 35% for our commercial roll off services. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, so the commercial basically provides the majority of the funds, uh, uh, and of course uh, uh, by being a commercial center for this part of Georgia, uh, we've got a lot of retail businesses here, and uh, some small, some large, but it all adds up, and uh, uh, that's a, a good picture that you have presented. And you know, uh, our uh, city sanitation department for years uh, has provided excellent service. Uh, we did for several years use a, a, a private company to do residential recycling uh, and decided to make a change a few years ago because of the number of complaints we were having and it's worked much smoother since we uh, have now our sanitation department doing this. Uh, and we're actually in the process of uh, getting ready for the city to assume responsibility for commercial, which you were showing us, that uh, uh, we expect to do this uh, not later than the middle of next summer. Uh, but uh, we've done an analysis, you and myself, Greg Roberts, our sanitation uh, director, and so we know that uh, we can handle this within the existing revenue stream, and we believe we can do the service equally well and certainly do a better job with customer service. So that'll be something that uh, I'm going to have Greg Roberts on with me on a future mm -hmm. show to talk about. Uh, but, uh, uh, but I think we're in good shape uh, financially with our sanitation fund, and uh, that's a good budget report that we have uh, mm -hmm. for this coming year. Now let's go to uh, the other two areas that are special funds, uh, Convention Vistas Bureau, CVB, and the Downtown Conference Center. Uh, and uh, CVB basically is paid for from a two cent occupancy tax on hotel uh, rooms uh, that uh, uh, covers, that's a, really the sole source of income mm -hmm. for our Convention Vistas Bureau. Of course, for the downtown conference center, we have that revenue source plus the rentals that we have. But kind of give us a run through on what we've got both with CVB and the conference center because I know they've seen some downturn also. Yes, yes. Uh, the conference center, as Bill said, has two revenue sources. We have the 2% hotel motel tax that we levy. Um, and for fiscal year 2011, it's declined from 328,000 in 2010 to 324,000 in 2011. Also, our activity fees for the conference center mm -hmm. rentals have declined from 121,000 in 2010 to a projection of 110,000 in 2011. So we've seen decreases over the past three years, actually, in the conference center revenues. The Convention and Visitors Bureau Fund is funded also by our 2% hotel motel tax, and it has seen declines over the past three years as well. Basically, you know, uh, people are traveling less, uh, and uh, hotel occupancy is down, mm -hmm. and, and certainly this impacts on both our CVB and the Downtown Conference Center revenues. Well, you know, Karen, we're about out of time. Uh, uh, we're going to have to have you come back to another episode of On the Agenda to talk about our 2002 SPLOSH program mm -hmm. because uh, uh, we have virtually completed the transportation component of that. Uh, our big remaining project, of course, is in Hunter Park with the reconstruction and renovation of that uh, facility, uh, those facilities, uh, and uh, we'll do that on another occasion. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so just get prepared so you can give us a report on that. And, and in that same program, we'll bring everybody up to date on things related to the Public Safety Municipal Court building. Well, Karen, thank you for being with me on this edition of On the Agenda. We'll have you back another time, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, hopefully to our viewers that today we have made sense as we've talked about dollars and cents. This is Bill Osmond signing off On the Agenda.